button here. Okay. All right, we're recording. Hey, welcome everyone. Hey, this is Rick Kaufman here. And today is January 16th. The month is halfway over. I, I'm like, wow. And um, just like, where is it going? <laughs> if you if you are not where you want to be on your um, um, goals, your objectives, the outcomes, the results that you're after, then, um, you know, we, it's time that we need to get to work. I mean, it's the 16th uh, already. And um, I know uh, every day that goes by, it just feels like there's more and more to do. Um, you know, especially yesterday I had, I was on, I mean, after the Facebook live yesterday, I mean, I was busy. I mean, we were on calls. I had two calls with two people from Israel, one from Moscow. I recorded um, a video with um, Trish Mielstein, who is part of this group also uh, for her page, um, her uh, life and wellness page. Good morning, Cheryl. How are we doing? And hopefully you got your coffee um, or whatever you want to drink in the morning. Um, waiting on my coffee to come. I don't know where it's at. I, I don't know. It's it, It'll come here soon, I, I'm sure. Um, but anyways, we are spending time on, uh, in our coffee break today, we're spending time on the corner of in-home safety or in-home water safety. Um, for those of us that set up tables, that set up, um, you know, or we go out and we speak to people face to face, or even if you want to create some content around this and you do your own Facebook lives or you do your own YouTube video or you do something here. I mean, this particular topic in home water safety, if I, uh, those of us that may have been paying attention last year or were um, in, in Texas, for example, January, and February of last year, was a horrific month for drowning in Texas, um, mostly, uh, um, mostly, uh, I think they had five children in the first quarter of 2019 that drowned in a bathtub. So um, in-home water safety is extremely important and um, so that's, that's, a, that's a topic that we're going to spend some time on today. And so, uh, matter of fact, um, I don't, <laughs> this is going to be kind of funny. I'm going to do a magic trick of all things. So I'm going to levitate my coffee in here. So here, let's see. Oh, there, it's not here. There. I think this probably looks rather stupid, doesn't it? Ah, it's hot. Anyway, if I could edit that out, I'll edit it out. Oh, look, there's a cup of coffee there. <laughs> oh, well, we're having fun. <laughs> it's Thursday. Um, anyways, that was my wife. Hey, Lori, say hi. 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 See this one. She's not, she doesn't have her morning face on yet. So, <laughs> oh. She says she does have her morning face on, so maybe it's it's just not a presentable morning face, right? She hasn't had all her coffee. But anyways, um, back to the subject at hand, now that I have my coffee. So, because I, I slept really good last night, and it's, well, yes and no, I was up a little bit, but then I slept till like after 8 o'clock, a little bit after, or right about 8 o'clock, so then I had to get up and get ready for this. So anyways, in-home water safety. It's extremely, extremely important because, you know, children can drown in the home. Where there's water, there's potential danger. Um, as I always say in my podcast, that drowning shows up when you least expect it. Um, and that's extremely important. Uh, some basic topics that you could discuss about, about in-home water safety, bathtubs, for example. Make sure that people, most of these uh, drownings, I think in Texas were with young children in bathtubs where either the parent or caregiver stepped away for just seconds, maybe went outside the bathroom and um, answered their phone or went to go get their cell phone or something like that. So um, that is something that, um, you know, people just don't think that it can happen. I, I you know, We've all heard the stories and I think that's really key. And that's, you know, uh, that's the message that we have to change that behavior. We have to get them to believe that drowning can 
happen to them. And yesterday we were talking about technology um, and how technology can play a part in your safety. And as part of a, a layer of protection, I think technology is going to be, I think, should be considered as a layer of protection. And some of these things that we're going to talk about in home safety, I think, are very low tech. I mean, it might be, you know, it might be some type of technology, but it's extremely low tech, um, very affordable. And these are things that you can purchase for your table and be able to, um, yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I have an audience. So I, you know. um, so for an example, um, window and door alarms. Okay. Uh, window and door alarms. And there, I have a four pack. I believe we picked that up in, um, at Walmart. Uh, we have foster children. We also have um, Alzheimer's. Uh, my father-in-law, who's an Alzheimer's um, um, patient, um, who is getting out of the house. So window and door alarms, and these should go upstairs on the upstairs windows also, especially if you have a backyard pool. Uh, we've heard stories of kids, even um, even if you have autistic children, I think, even if, if, if you don't have a pool, th these are probably a great, um, item to have, especially if you have young children and they become mobile. We've all heard these people, parents get prosecuted because they take a nap on the couch and their two-year-old walks out the front door, walks down the street, somebody calls the police and they pick them up and bring them back and then they get charged for child endangerment. And, and, it's, and it's a totally innocent but it, uh, situation. It was not intentional, just like drowning is not intentional. Things happen. Children get out the doors. Um, so window and door alarms, okay? Um, very low tech, very inexpensive. I believe these are what around sixteen dollars. Is that right, Lori? Yeah. Or less than twenty bucks. Um, you can have these. Pick these up. Put them on your table. It's a great conversation starter, um, and it's a and it's a something that's visual. Uh, people see exactly what they are. Um, and the other thing, uh, this is something that um, that I thought was it's pretty cool. It's called a door stop alarm. Uh, per, uh, personal security doorstop alarm, um, great for home office, uh, dorm rooms, hotel rooms, and more. Um, and, you know, obviously the more part of it is probably the biggest thing, but it's a doorstop. As you can see, it's, it, it looks like a doorstop, but it has a pad, there's a metal pad on it. So when the door opens, it hits that. And of course it stops the door from opening all the way and then sounds an alarm. Again, um, if you have any type of, this could be, uh, think of this as a possible wedge in a sliding door. Um, if you have a sliding back, uh, back door where that might slide open um, and the child uh, turns around and slides the door, but this will stop it where the child can't get the door open and maybe it'll sound the alarm. Um, also other doors, things like that, that you wanna keep somebody from going, going out. Um, this, this alarm does not prevent them from going out. This just sounds an alarm, okay? And then you would have to react. This would sound the alarm, plus prevent the door from opening and not allowing them out. Again, pick this up, I believe at Walmart. Um, I think they're, you know, they're less than 10 or 20 bucks, something like that. Um, but, but great props um, for you to have a discussion, great items to have at your table, very inexpensive um, that you can sit and talk to people about um, in home security. This just gets, these are conversation starters. I look at these, everything happens you know, in the conversation. You know, we have to have conversations about water safety with people. So, you know, think of ways, think of ideas. And the reason why uh, we are in the process of putting our checklist together and the reason why I'm calling it, um, you know, the uh, calling it K corner, the 12 corners of water safety where your knowledge meets the water. Okay. Because that's exactly, I, I believe, Water safety is something we have to educate and people have to be knowledgeable on. This is something that many parents, I think, take for granted. And whether or not you have a pool or you don't have a pool. So if you're talking with people, it's just a matter of putting the ideas, planting the seeds, putting the ideas. You can't make people go buy these things, but you can strongly recommend them. And if you give them multiple reasons, understand, understand one thing. I believe if you show them the possibility of how these things can work in their life, in their home, um, 
and it speaks to them and gives them the outcome that they want without scaring them to death, you can capture their uh, attention. You can get a hold of them. Other things that we can talk about, and you can use graphics, things like that, uh, doggy doors, anything that gives them access to the outside from the inside of the home. Um, the other area, um, garage door openers, okay? Uh, if, a if a child can get into the garage or from your home into the garage and hit a garage door opener, that would be something else. The other thing too is when um, the bathroom, let's go back to the bathroom where the bathtub and the toilet is at. Um, keep the bathtub, the bathroom door closed as an example. Um, and possibly, I don't know whether or not you would wanna lock it, but again, this might be a bathroom door, might be a great place to put a door alarm if you're keeping the door closed. You know, you can turn these on and off. So, you know, and the other thing is, is I've not seen this, but I saw this in an article the other day. Um, you can get actual locks for your toilet bowl, okay, for the lid on the toilet. Kind of like maybe, um, I think they're similar to uh, the locks or the, the latches to keep children from opening the door like to where you might under your cabinets or things like that to keep them out where you have poisons and other things that can be dangerous. So again, you can have toilet bowl locks, um, lock, you know, keep the door closed. The other thing, make sure that you, they understand that, you know, it has to be adult supervision, especially if you have a babysitter. Uh, my wife wrote a blog post a little over a year ago, year and a half ago, and what it boils down to, and especially while in these drowning situations, um, you know, it's like, you have to ask the question, when accidents happen, okay, when accidents happen, who's watching your child? And I think when we begin to look and break the accident down, break a, and take a look and dissect this thing, we find out that really nobody's paying attention. The child wanders off. Nobody's watching the child. When we think somebody else might be, when we're not, um, that's when these things happen. Um, and then find stories, find things that you can do that will allow you to have this discussion. So it's not your personal experience. You can put your personal experience in it, but then you have stories that's going to help convey that um, situation that you're, that you're talking to people about. So I think those, you know, these are just conversation starters. These are great areas to start. I think in-home water safety, especially here it is middle of January. Like I said, it's January 16th. Um, here in the north, okay, yeah, we've got water, frozen water, cold water. There's uh, all kinds of things outside. Um, and then it's we're, we're going to be getting a deep freeze here, I think, this weekend. So it's going to get cold. Uh, most of the bodies of water are not frozen. Uh, we're going to get enough cold air probably over the next few days. That there's going to be a thin layer of ice. And I mean thin, that's probably not going to support a child or, or even a small animal. So um, alarms, door, door alarms, window alarms would be very, very important, especially because children want to get outside especially autistic children. So if there's, a, if there's people here that have experience with autism, autistic children or autism would be great. I would love to hear your comments of other things that we could suggest for people because, um, you know, what works for autistic children will work for um, other children also. So um, safety, security is, is important for the in-home and, um, and these are just tools. I mean, these aren't, uh, that's the way I look at this. This is just a tool as a parent to allow me to, to do my job better. We're foster parents, so we put these on the doors because, well, we have a lot of foster kids that are runaways. Uh, so we have these on the doors. We also, um, some of them like to go in the other, in the, the other one's bedrooms in the middle of the night for whatever reason. And so, we have to have door alarms on their bedroom alarms when we turn them on. Uh, or when they leave, you know, you have younger ones here. Um, we live in an old farmhouse. We have a balcony that overlooks our, um, overlooks our um, what do you call that, family room, I guess you could say. We've got two doors that open up. We have some special locks. Um, for example, we were doing respite for a autistic child. And there was this lock that kind of, had a lock and I think it's almost like a zip tie type of lock and it went around and it, it latched the two handles together, if you will. And I couldn't figure out how to unlock this door. We had a 13, 13 year old autistic child that within 10 seconds had that door unlocked and open. And this was supposed to be a child safety secure lock. Um, I could, 
I, I even had a problem getting that door unlocked. So uh, we also have those, you know, you know, kind of old school, but you know, the the, the door, the chains, you, you know, the doors, um, the locks with the chains. We have those way up high on the door, and um, that's another way. So you could have the door alarm. So you could put a door alarm like that on your door. That sounds alarm if they break if it breaks that connection. But then you can also put instead of having that chain lock that's really low where a child could reach it, you could put it way at, you could put it at the top. Okay, we did that um, uh, because the children can't reach that. Obviously, they could get a chair, they could get something like that. But but it's twofold. If if they crack that door open and realize there's a chain or something stopping it from open, alarm sounds. You have time to react to that situation and get there to. Um, you know, stop the unthinkable from happening. And even if that unthinkable would be just having the child get outside and maybe they don't go to the pool, but they go someplace else. So um, just some uh, basic ideas that I had, um, things like that. So, you know, if, if you're setting up, I, I just think if you're setting up a table, these are things that could be sitting on the table that a parent might, you know, if you're at your county fair or at your, at your mall, this time of year, there's a lot of home shows. There's uh, a lot of, you know, pool and spa shows. Um, consider looking at maybe setting up at one of these things at your local community, um, your, um, maybe your mall, something like that. And very inexpensive that you could put into your bag. Um, so that way you have some nice props, some nice conversation starters. And you don't even they really have to have a conversation. If you're talking about water safety and somebody walks by and sees one of these things on your table, that's going to make them stop. That might make them think. Um, curiosity. Uh, it's just, again, it's a conversation. Everything happens inside the conversation. When we don't have that conversation with somebody, then somebody, uh, people have the potential of slipping through the clack, cracks. Clacks. Yeah, there you go. Anyways, hey, guys, um, that's what we got for you today uh, for our in-home safety. Um, I'm sure there's lots of other things. There's lots of things that we're putting into our 12 corners, our checklist. Each one of these corners is a topic and then underneath there will be uh several items to have checked off so if there's something there that you think would be a great resource or something that maybe we should add to it um then yeah let's definitely look at those items because you know uh, mop buckets is another one um you know uh and you have those big sinks now um you know in the bathtub you got the little baby seats uh baby seats in the bathtub. So, um, <clears throat> you know, so from that standpoint, you've got those things, that, you know, uh, that are aids, that are tools to help parents do their job better, but could pose uh, potential dangers. Um, the other thing would be to uh, um, get with other people. Uh, check, uh, you want some ideas? Uh, like I said, I think I said this the other day. If I didn't, I'll say it again. Um, <clears throat> baby proofing business is a multi-billion dollar business. Um, just go to a baby proofing website. You want to understand what, you know, all the different resources and tools and, and, and things that keep children safe in the home. Every one of those would be potential things that you could use to keep children safe um, in a pool. Um, obviously, fencing is another thing. And, you know, I think maybe uh, fencing around a pool, um, like a second uh, a barrier between the home and the pool that could be part of in-home security also even though that's just outside the door so um you know that's a separate corner that we have on there is barriers because barriers can be very um you know uh, would be all over the place so and and that's just another barrier window alarms are barriers they're just layers layers upon layers and upon layers of protection so um, I like to look at these as dominoes. Here's another way to maybe explain it. You know, what happens? You knock one domino over. What happens when the next domino comes? You know, it's just it's it's just a progression. And somewhere along the way, you know, um, and I've got a great demonstration uh, that I can I can show this on. And and here's the in th in layers of protection barriers could be very similar to, um, you know, exactly Jennifer. The more layers, the better. And so, for example, when you have a domino, you could double the size of the domino within like, you know, a very short period of time. You have a domino that's larger than, you know, um, you know, one of the largest mountains or or reaching halfway to the moon. But, it, but you know, it, because you're doubling that size, but every barrier potentially could be a domino. And and uh, at some point in time, 
you, you, that last barrier, that last in-home uh, layer of protection has to be what stops them. Um, and ultimately we are, as parents, um, I think was it, um, I don't know if it was Cheryl, but somebody posted, I saw something posted on Facebook that, you know, um, it's not so much a failure of the layer, it's, it's a lapse or, or it's not a failure in supervision, really. It's just a momentary lapse of supervision. And I think that's, you know, a great way to say this, that, you know, we don't intend to not supervise, but, you know, we do turn our backs and pour our, our we do turn our backs, our child could be behind us. We do pour ourselves a cup of coffee, turn around, and our child's not there. My son, who's 21 years old, if you're going to be at the NDPA conference um, in Texas, you, you might see my son running around there because he'll be going with us. Um, for example, when he was um, maybe a year and a half, no, not even a year and a half because he wasn't walking yet. Um, I was in the middle of a divorce. I had custody of my children. I was frying hamburgers. In a, in, so for example, the stove is in front of me. So if the kitchen, the kitchen and everything's behind me and just to the right of where I was standing was a corner that led to a doors that went to the basement. He, he was in a walker. Um, and you know, 21 years ago, you can buy these walkers with the wheels on them. And I don't, I mean, you can still probably find them today, but most, they don't really, for this reason is because a child can, you know, he got around me, didn't, I was just flipping hamburgers. And next thing I know, I hear this boom, 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 down the stairs he went. Um, saw him land at the bottom of the stairs, picked him up. I mean, I went and checked him, uh, made sure that nothing was broken. Um, he was, he wasn't crying. Not, he didn't start crying until I got there. And I think because he saw how, you know, I was concerned and worried. And, and so the point of this is, is that's how fast the accident happened. I mean, even if I would have been able to see that and hear that, which I didn't, I don't recall hearing it. He went down the stairs so fast. Actually, he wound up, um, he wound up with a severe concussion and a fractured skull out of that because afterwards he got, he was, he got sick. He threw up, which is a sign of concussion. And so we took him to the emergency room and, um, I mean, they let him come home, but, uh, but again, it, that's what happened. And, you know, unfortunately it was an accident. It was not intended. It was an accident because I left, you know, I left the basement door open and, you know, that could have very easily been a door that led to the outside because, um, we used to have a in-ground pool, but after Kelsey drowned, um, we had some maintenance issues and I just didn't see any sense putting money. So we hired a guy to come in with a backhoe uh, and he dug it up and buried the thing. And then of course, you know, we sold the house. So the people don't know they've got a pool, pool liner, diving board, everything just <laughs> below the surface of the ground. Um, if they ever dig up their backyard, they're going to find, find this stuff because uh, probably that pool, that rubber pool liner will be there for millennia, you know, for forever, probably uh, along with the concrete, everything else that goes with it. So, um, but anyways, that's just how quick that accident can happen. So anyways, I rambled on way too much, too long. Um, hopefully everybody had some fun here, had some coffee. Um, Cheryl says she has her, in my, oh, her, her pupper cup. Okay. So I, I'm assuming that's a cup with a dog. I, I have my Ohio state mug. So anyways, but, um, so guys, it's time to go to work and hopefully you enjoyed this. So hopefully I gave you some thoughts. Uh, you know, we, these are things that we already know about. Um, but again, um, these are very inexpensive resources, tools that you can have in your little goodie bag that you can take or use as you're talking as we're moving into springtime and putting as part of your demonstration. Um, and, and the thing about it, you know, well, I won't, I'm not going to take any more of your time. I'll just kind of um, leave this, what I want to say for maybe tomorrow because tomorrow's Friday. So something to work on. So anyways, that's where we're at. Uh, look forward to uh, talking to you guys tomorrow. Um, any comments, leave them here. Shoot me an email at rick at the Um If you want, um, feel free to uh, shoot me an email. We'll jump on a quick call. Whatever the case may be, we can discuss ideas, brainstorm, um, whatever. Okay, guys, you're awesome. Keep up the good work. We will see you all later. All right. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. Gave you some ideas. Food for thought.